Hello everyone, I'm Mark. And I'm Lenise. And you're watching Living Well, You in a Basin, where success is defined by you. We're really excited about today's show. First, we're going to get beyond the couch and catch up with David Gale and talk about his journey with the Dino Try. Also, the first day of school is just around the corner, and on Dish by Dish, we'll meet with Tana Allen, a local mother who learned a few tricks to get her kids ready for the day. And finally, we will hear how local man Justin Stewart took the weight loss challenge and transformed his life for the better in living well your way. What an amazing story. So, let's get started. Let's do it. Living Well, You Enter Basin, presented by Ashley Regional Medical Center. Also made possible by Anna Darko and You Enter Recreation District. Living Well, Beyond the Couch. Okay, Dave, so you finished the triathlon. I know, can you believe it? Six months ago, <laughs> you hadn't even thought of yourself as a triathlete. That's true, that is true. That's true? Yeah. Did well, you think that, you know, when we initially gave you this challenge, that first of all, you'd be able to accomplish this goal? Um, well, I, I uh, yes and no. I mean, I, I had faith that since you were issuing the goal, <laughs> that you figured that it was possible. Yeah. Um, I, I honestly didn't know how I was going to accomplish it, uh, so I guess that's the no part. The no part, yeah. right. And, you know, I, I think about that, and, you know, I think part of what, the person that's sitting on the couch thinks is, I can't do this. It's too much. Yeah. You know, but, uh, you know, you and I, we're, we're athletic enough. Uh -huh. we, we probably were never stars in whatever field that no. we specialized no. in a high school level or whatnot. But we can do it. Sure. And you did it. Yeah, I mean, it really was just, uh, it was kind of like one bite at a time. Yeah. I, I, I knew that it, at some point in time I had to be able to run this far, swim this far, bike this far. That meant that today I had to get up and do something so that tomorrow I could do something and a little bit more and a little bit more right. over time. And I think, that's, and I think that's the key is, you know, we look at ourselves and we say, I'm not that guy. You know, I don't have the ability to be a triathlete or to be, uh, you know, whatever it might be that intimidates us. Sure. But one piece at a time. So talk about your experience. Uh, it was, it was, I'm not going to lie, it was difficult. Yeah. It, it, was, it was both difficult and easy. It was difficult because... Every day, you have to do it. Mm -hmm. But because, uh, you know, I, I, I kept track and, and, and I'd write down every day what I did. And then a week later, even just a week later, I would look and go, holy cow, look how much further I am than I was a week ago. A week from then, I could do three, just like that. And then I could do five, and then I could do seven. The next thing I knew, I could do a full mile. I mean, not the next thing, I was towards the end. But I got to the point where I was able to swim a mile. That's 38 laps. A lot being there and back. Uh, you know, it's incredible what your body can do if you just try to use it in a way that you never have before. And, and, and that's the thing, as a human body, you can say, I can do this. Oh, for sure. You know, and that's part of what we're talking about when we're coming off the couch is, I, I, I can't. And we, and we defeat ourselves, but as soon as we say we can, living proof here, and, and the coolest part is that she didn't just do a sprint. I always hear people <laughs> say, I just did a sprint traveling. You gussied up and you did, I yeah. used your word there, gussy, did you, did you that see that? Was that good. was yeah. good, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and did this Olympic triathlon. Tell me about when you finished. What were the emotions? Uh, I was, I was proud of myself. Uh, it was, it was more difficult than I thought it was going to be. I got, by the time I got to the run, I was a little more spent than I thought I was going to be. And, and again, I, I got my brother into this and I said, Chris, if, if I do this, we're going to do the real one. We're going to do the Olympic one. We're going to go all out. And he said, yeah, let's do it. I had never done a real triathlon before, and so I didn't realize the. I probably should have started with the sprint, but we did it. I got to the end, and even though uh, my times were way off what I wanted them to be, I crossed the finish line running. I hadn't stopped. And, uh, you know, this, this kind of euphoria of, ha, I told you I could do it, body. You didn't win, I did. The canoes were behind me waiting. Come on, come on, let's get out of the water. Let's go. I had no doubt that I wasn't going to beat anybody like handily, like I was going to come in and be like, oh, I am third place or anything like that. I just wanted to finish the race. And that's the greatest feeling to me. I can go out and I can swim a mile now. I can do it. I can just go swim a mile. And three months ago, I would have thought that was impossible. I can ride my bike 30 miles. And I can go run six miles. In fact, I can do all three of those at the same time. 
it really hurts and I won't do it except for maybe once a year, but it's possible. And so I, I have just this, this feeling of, of such great accomplishment that I made my goal. And I'm so grateful to Mark just for, you know, issuing me that challenge. And that's the part I think I like the best is when you're done, nobody can ever take that title of triathlete away from you. Yeah. You know, I did it. It's not a team sport where somebody missed a layup and maybe you didn't win the game or, you know, you made a bad pass. I did this. And that's what we're talking about. You know, here we are, we're living well in the Una Basin. It's little things. It can be a triathlon. It can be walking outside with your spouse for a half an hour at night. You can be going to play volleyball. So take a ride with your kids on your bicycle. That's the kind of thing that we can do as human beings because we told ourselves we can. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. I think that's awesome <laughs> that you did it. Thanks for asking uh, me, too. I'm glad to be a part of that, even if it was vicariously. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Living well, dish by dish. Today I'm in the kitchen with Tana Allen. She's a busy mother of four, and she's here to show us some healthy, quick, and easy meals that we can do to get our kids ready for school in the morning and have some good nutrition before they start their day. So Tana, uh, one of the biggest challenges that I, I know I face as a mom, and I'm sure many others out there face, is I have kids that all kinds of different schedules and whatnot, and how do we, how do, we do this in the morning? How do we get them fed, and what's some things we can do here to, to make sure that when they walk out the door, they're ready for school? Okay, that's a good challenge. Um, these meals are, are easy to make. Your elementary school kids can probably even make them themselves, and um, the smoothies, maybe your older kids, you want to make them, but um, one of the challenges we have is making sure our kids are full throughout the day. Now, we know that protein is a good and nutritious element that they need to have in their diets. Um, so the first thing that um, I want to introduce you today are uh, these Eggo sandwiches. And these are so easy to make. Um, you just take an Eggo waffle, toast them, and then um, this one has peanut butter and strawberries on it. This one has Nutella and bananas on it. They're nice because you can just grab them and go, um, and you don't have to worry about the mess that goes along with syrup. Oh yeah, that is great. Yeah, both the peanut butter and the Nutella have a good amount of protein in them. Okay, and the Nutella, that's just something that they, I mean, for those that don't know what Nutella is, where can they find that? Oh, you can just find it in the peanut butter aisle. Okay. Um, it's right next to the peanut butter. Okay. It's called Nutella. Right. Um, a variation of this, um, we have some wheat toast here with Nutella on it as well. And it, you can put your, your fruits on there, sweeten it up, and uh, have it with a glass of milk. Again, your elementary school kids can do this. Okay, now you mentioned wheat. Why the wheat as opposed to white? Is it just healthier? Why should we? Your wheat bread um, has the fat and the protein in with the wheat grain where your white bread does not. Okay. So a little more nutrition there. Um, another uh, suggestion we have are these yogurt parfaits. Ooh, and look how pretty it looks. Yeah, they're fantastic. <laughs> you just go ahead and um, you can layer your granola and your fruit and your yogurt together. Okay. And uh, that provides a lot of excellent nutrition for your kids. And it's something they can do. And you can layer it with different fruits and different colors. And So going back to this, this is just yogurt. You've got a little granola in it and then just topped with more yogurt. And great. That's and easy. Strawberries. It's easy very enough. easy. Okay, and our last dish today um, are fruit smoothies. And this is a great way to hide some vegetables in your breakfast. Um, sometimes you can use spinach or kale, and the, the berries and the fruit usually cover up the flavor so the kids will still eat them. That's great. Um, this smoothie right here is made with the bananas and strawberries and some spinach in there. Um, and then if you have some older kids or maybe some boys and they're into the protein shakes, you can make those into a fruit smoothies. You can also put bananas, peanut butter, um, and even spinach in these. And the nice thing about these fruit smoothies is they are very, very portable. So you just can make them and then just take them and uh, go to school and send your kids off to the to school with a nutritious breakfast. They taste great too and you know the thing I love about this is every one of these meals that you've showed us it, they can they can sit down and eat while they're home grab it take it in the car they can eat it if they're even on the bus if they have to put it on a paper plate so it's fantastic that way we make sure that the kids get some really good nutrition in their day so great well thank you so much um, this was this was fantastic for you to be here hopefully she's given us some really good ideas of things that we can do to Make sure that our kids get the meals that they need before they head off to school. So thanks again, Tana. Thank you. Thanks for having me.
Now for Anadarko's health and safety tip. Being dehydrated can sap your energy and make you feel tired. If you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated, so make sure you're drinking plenty of water, whether you're working at a desk or working out. Living well, your way. I'm here with Justin Stewart today, who is the winner of the Buinta Basin Weight Loss Challenge. Justin, thank you for joining us. You bet, my pleasure. Uh, the first question I have for those that maybe are watching and don't know anything about this is maybe explain a little bit about this challenge. Well, I was in a situation in my life, I'm you know, 38 years old and my kids are getting older and they're just being able to outrun me, outdo me in sports and I wanted to be able to keep up with them. And I was starting to feel tired and, and you know, didn't have a lot of energy and I wanted to do something about that. So this opportunity came and I had visited my doctor and my doctor had told me I need to do something about my weight. And this just happened to be at the same time as this challenge was, was ramping up and I decided to enter and, and I got chosen. Oh, great, great. So tell me, what, what did this challenge involve? What, I mean, is it something you did on your own? Is it something that they, they did for you? What, what did it involve? They actually gave us a lot of support um, through the UNA Rec Center okay. and a, a lot of other sponsors. They sent us to classes every month where we met with lots of people that had a lot of experience in losing weight or, or different mm -hmm. exercises that would make it so that you, you, know, you could challenge yourself. And so I had a lot of support. The only difference was I was the only one from Roosevelt. And so I wasn't able to attend all of the classes, but all the other people involved kept me motivated. Okay. And there was monthly weigh-ins, or how yeah. did that work? This competition went from January okay. to June, and we'd have a weigh-in every week throughout that. Oh, wow, so, weekly. Yeah, and it was definitely a commitment. I mean, oh, yeah. it's not something in two months you were done. You had to work your way through it for six months. So. Wow. You learned a lifestyle change from it. That's that's true. It would be a huge lifestyle change. Right. So, so what lifestyle change have you? I mean, what have you seen? What results have you seen in your life from? I well, guess first of all, I should ask, how much have you lost? Well, during the competition, I believe I lost a hundred pounds. Wow. And overall, uh, since the first of January, one hundred and thirteen pounds. Wow, that's amazing. So, thank you. It was quite a challenge for me. But the biggest thing for me is I had a lot of. Uh, I drank a lot of pop, ate a lot of sugary type goodies. My wife's Our a great killers. cook, yeah. <laughs> and so for me, it was difficult to overcome those things. But uh, my lifestyle has changed a lot to fruits and vegetables and uh, doing away from anything with as much as possible salt, um, those type of things, and just eating healthier, regular exercise, things that you know improve your life. Well, how do you feel? How does how does it feel? I mean, 113 pounds, that's a lot of weight. So. Right. Definitely. Um, I, I feel great. I, I have a lot more flexibility. I'm able to run with my kids a lot further. They've been doing that's these, uh, you know, 5K runs with me, and, oh. and I'm able to keep up with them now. And I just feel better, a more steady flow of energy versus the up and downs that come with sugar. Sure. Yeah. So. Sure. Notice, I mean, any changes as far as... I know I've heard people say when they go off the sugar and things like that, they sleep better, they just they concentrate more, anything like that that you notice lifestyle-wise? or Definitely. I, I kind of would keep a steady energy level, and then at night my body would shut down and I would get my sleep that I needed, and I was able to get out of bed um, you know, when I needed to get out versus hitting the alarm clock five times. It was just automatically getting up. My energy level was always steady and constant when I was eating proper. Oh, that's great. So you were you said you were the only one from Roosevelt? Yes. Was, and that was probably difficult. You didn't have anyone there helping you or did you have others that maybe weren't involved in the challenge that were doing this with you or helping you out? Yeah, my wife did a lot of, she changed the way that we cooked our dinners um, and she would exercise with me. In fact, she lost 35 pounds just wow. helping me. And then the last three months, I spent a lot of time with Jeff Winterton here at the UNA Rec Center That's as right. a yeah as a personal trainer, and he'd work me out at least twice a week, and they were killer workouts. I mean, they would push me beyond anything that I would normally do, which was a big help. Well, great. So, what did you do as far as the exercise went? Is there anything that was 
Um, a lot of mine was uh, CrossFit type okay. workouts, um, very high intensity, and then take a rest, and then very high intensity again, um, trying to bring up my heart rate and then let it rest and then bring it up again. So. Okay. Well, Justin, if, if there's anybody out there that's watching this show today, what advice would you give them? If, if they were thinking about doing something like this, what advice would you have for them? I'd tell them you have nothing to lose. When I went in, when I began going to the gym, I was the biggest person there every day for three or four months. And then my body started to change and I was losing that weight by the time I was done. I was one of the fitter people there at the gym. Um, so don't think that you can't do it. Anyone can do it if I can. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate it. Um, I think it's great for our viewers to hear your story and know that that's something that they can accomplish as well. Uh, I also want to give a really big thanks to the Uinta Recreation District and Ashley Regional Medical Center. They were big sponsor of, sponsors of this and they were able to help somebody like Justin improve his life and many others in the basin. So thank you to them and also thanks once again, Justin, for thank coming. You. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us on our episode today. It has been awesome to be a part of the community and get to know all the things that you guys are doing to make your life better. Yeah, what an amazing experience. We got to see a guy who lost 100 pounds. We got to see a guy try a triathlon. And some of those dishes were uh, delicious, let's and, just say that. Easy. Oh, and easy. Well, that's it for today's show. If you have a story you'd like to tell, contact VTV Channel 6. We'll get your story on the air. Until next time, Live well, you in a basin. See you next time.